This coming Sunday, we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. It is the Sunday after Christmas. We have just celebrated the birth of Jesus, and now we are celebrating Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, the Holy Family. Our Gospel passage is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. Let's take a listen. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been <clears throat> revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. <clears throat> the passage describes Mary and Joseph taking Jesus to the temple for the rite of purification according to Jewish law. While they were there, they encountered two important figures, Simeon and Anna. Both of them are examples of prayer and longing and expectation waiting for the Savior of the world to be born. When Simeon takes Jesus into his arms, he says, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. Both Mary and Joseph must have been taken aback their newborn son is described as the one who would bring salvation, and that their newborn son is a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. They certainly knew of Jesus' unusual birth, and now they are learning more about his future. Mary, Joseph, and Jesus returned to Nazareth, and we are told child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. We're told so very little about Jesus' young years, how he grew from that tiny infant in the manger till the time that he becomes an adult and begins his public ministry, announcing the kingdom of God is at hand. So what happened in between? There is very little recorded about this time, and why might that be? The writers of the Gospel focused firstly on Jesus dying and rising, the Paschal mystery, what we celebrate at Easter. 
They then focused on his birth. Next was his public ministry, his teaching and his miracles, his interactions with so many people. These years in the home of Joseph and Mary are somewhat hidden. We can only imagine that he grew up learning Joseph's trade of carpentry, working with his foster father in the workshop. We can only imagine that, as was typical of young men at the time, he would have learned about his religion from his parents, from Mary and Joseph. He would have learned to pray. He would have worshipped with them. He would have followed their example and grown into a polite, kind, and unselfish adult. We would certainly like to know more. I would guess that parents of today who are struggling with a teenager might just want to know about Jesus as a teenager. We know that his mother and father were part of his formative years, and so too with young people today. They are formed by their parents. If parents are holding <clears throat> on to their faith, young people will see that example. We pray for all families, parents, and children that they may continue to search for Jesus in their lives and that they will turn to him always for how they are to act and speak. Let the gospel fill your week. See you in church. For now, God bless.